Hi, I'm Gareth Green, and in this video, we're going to use the same opening musical material to modulate to the three most closely related keys. Now, the reason for doing this is that I know a lot of people have trouble with modulation. You know, they can write a piece of music in a key, but as soon as they move to another key, they feel a little bit uncomfortable about how best to do that. And one of the most successful ways of doing that is to use a pivot chord. So first of all, let's be crystal clear what we mean by this term pivot chord. Well, a pivot chord is a chord that belongs to the key that you're leaving and also to the key that you're joining. So I always like to think of this as a kind of musical door. You know, you're in one room, you want to go to the next room. How do you get there? You walk through the door. The door is the common space, isn't it? The means of access from this room to that room. So think of the pivot chord as a kind of musical door. So, we're looking at examples that begin in C major, and what we're going to do is work out how to use a pivot chord to go to the three most closely related keys. And if we're starting in a major key, as we are here in C major, those three closely related keys are the dominant key, the subdominant key, and the relative minor key. And we're going to see how we might use a pivot chord to go to each of those. So just before we go any further, let me play you these three examples that we're going to consider. So you'll notice that in the three examples, we begin with the same opening three chords. And then the first one moves to the dominant key, the second one moves to the subdominant key, the third one moves to the relative minor key. So here we are, C major, modulating to the dominant key, G major. Okay, number two, same opening in C major, modulating to the subdominant key, F major. And now number three, the same opening, this time modulating to the relative minor key, A minor. Okay, this may or may not be the musical style in which you want to work. That doesn't matter, I'm doing this in fairly conventional four-part harmony, but it will work in any style. Okay, so we can hear that there's a different kind of outcome each time, isn't there, as we're moving to those three different keys. Um, but we can also hear, hopefully, that the transition between the C major opening and the new key, a bar later, is actually very smooth. So we haven't got any shock factors in affecting that change of key, that modulation. And the reason for that is we're using one of these pivot chords. So let's think about pivot chords. We're starting in C major. So here are the chords for the key of C major. And what we've got to do, if we're modulating to G major, we've got to say which of these chords also appears in G major. Well, if these are the chords in C major, let's have a think about what happens in G major. Well, chord one in C major, is also chord four in G major. So that could be a pivot chord. This one is no good, number two, because it's got F natural in it. So if we've got F natural in it, it can't be a pivot chord if we're going to G major, because in G major, we're gonna need an F sharp, aren't we? Well, what about chord three? Well, in G major, chord three is gonna be chord six. So that's a possible pivot chord. What about chord four? No good. Why is it no good? It's got F natural in it. So for the same reasons as we've mentioned in relation to chord two, it's no good going to G major. Okay, chord five is chord one in G major. So that's a possible pivot chord. Chord six is chord two in G major. So that's a possible pivot chord. Chord seven, it's got an F natural in it. No good. 
So we can now see that if we're in C major and we want to modulate to the dominant key of G major, these are the possible pivot chords. Any one of those will do. Now, if you have a look at example one, the pivot chord in this case is the fourth beat of the first bar. All right, so we start in C major, we have chord one, chord one B, going back to one, and then we have chord five, and then we come to this chord. Now that chord, the fourth beat of the first bar, is a C major chord, it's chord one, but it's also chord four in G major, the new key. It's in first inversion, so we can say it's a 4B chord in the new key, or a 1B chord in the, in the old key, a 4, 6, 3, or a 1, 6, 3. So that's what that is. Because I've then used that as a pivot chord, I can now go straight into the new key. So what do I do at the beginning of the second bar? I now have chord five in the key of G major. So you see how this pivot chord works? Everything to the left of the pivot chord is in C major. Everything to the right of the pivot chord is in G major. But that pivot chord, the last chord of the first bar, is that door taking us from this space into that space, from C major into G major. Now I could have used any of these other possible pivot chords, but the important thing is to use a pivot chord. So we make that smooth transition from one key to the next. So C major, that's the pivot chord. We're hearing it as chord one in first inversion in C, but we can also hear it as chord four in first inversion in G. Then I carry on in G with a chord five in G, and then I'm going to call one in G. So I'm now happily ensconced in the new key. So once I've used the pivot chord, the important thing is to introduce accidentals that establish the new key. So you see, as soon as I've done that pivot chord at the end of bar one, I've got an F sharp at the beginning of the next bar to pull me into G. It's the F sharp that's really going to pull us into G. If I don't use an F sharp, then who's to say that the last chord of the first bar is a pivot chord. It could just be chord one in C major. It's only when I hear the F sharp that I realize that that last chord of the first bar is the pivot chord pulling us into the new key. Okay, so that's example one. Now, in example two, we're modulating to the subdominant key. Uh, so that's the key of F major. So let's have a look what happens when we go to F major. Which are the pivot chords this time? Well, chord one in C, is chord five in F, so that's quite useful. Chord two in C is chord six in F, so that's good. Chord three, no good to us. F major's got a B flat in it, chord three in C has got a B natural, so we can't use that, can we? Chord four in C major is chord one in F major. Chord five in C major is no use to us because it's got a B natural, we're looking for B flat, aren't we? What about this chord six in F major? That would be a chord three, so that's a possible pivot chord. And chord seven is no use to us because it's got B natural. So you see you end up with a different set of possible pivot chords, but you've got several options, doesn't matter which one you use. Okay, let's have a look at number two. So here's what number two sounds like, just to remind you. So you can hear how that starts in C major and then it cadences in F major at the end of the second bar. So where's the pivot chord this time? Well, really, the pivot chord now comes at the beginning of the second bar. So we've got the same opening as discussed previously, all this is as it was before. Now, when I come to the beginning of bar two, I've got a chord of C major, haven't I? So that's chord one in the original key. And we're saying in the key of F major, that's chord five. So from the beginning of the second bar, one in C major and also five in F major, so that's my pivot chord. And what I'm showing you here is that you can kind of decorate it a little bit if you like. So I've got a little decoration in the alto part there. 
And then notice I'm introducing B flat because I need that accidental that's pulling me into the new key. As soon as I hear that B flat, I know that I'm no longer listening to chord one in C, but I'm now listening to five, seven, a dominant seventh in the key of F. That B flat is now pulling me into F major. So what I'm trying to show you here is when you compare number one with number two, the modulation into G major in number one, I've kind of made that happen a little bit earlier than the modulation into F major that I've shown you in example two. Just to show you that you can spread that over a slightly bigger space or you can compact it if you want to, but the process is still the same. We still need to use a pivot chord. Okay, now the third version is going to the relative minor key. So relative minor of C major is A minor. Let's have a look at what we've got this time. Well, when you're going to a minor key, when you're writing harmony, it's usually the default position that you're going to think about the harmonic minor. So think about harmonic minor scale. Now, there'll be loads of people wanting to modulate using natural minor. Lots of people saying, why can't we use melodic minor? Perfectly fine, you can use natural minor if you want to, and that might just, well, it will throw up some slightly different pivot chords for you. Obviously you can use melodic minor, but when you're writing harmony, better to think harmonic minor. The clue's in the title, isn't it? Harmonic harmony. So working on that basis, we would say that one in C major is not really a useful pivot chord into A minor because in the harmonic minor in A minor, we're raising the seventh degree of the scale, which will be G. So G wants to be G sharp. Okay, if you're going to natural minor, you could use it as a pivot chord. But if you're being more conventional as we are being here, you'll use the harmonic minor, so one is not gonna work for you. Two in C major is four in A minor. So that's a good rudder. Three in C major, not much use to you for the harmonic minor in A minor, because again, you've got a, a G natural. Could be useful for the natural minor, as I say. Okay, what about this chord four? Well, in A minor, that's a chord six. So that's quite useful. What about chord five in C major? Not really because it's got the G natural. So as we said before, chord six, well, that's chord one in A minor. So that's quite useful. Chord seven is chord two in A minor. So you see, it's quite interesting when you compare these, you suddenly realize that the pivot chords change depending on where you're going. It also makes it clear that if you're going to more extreme keys, the further away you're going, the harder it will be to find pivot chords. So we're only moving one key away. You know, C major to G major just involves adding F sharp. C major to F major just involves adding B flat. C major to A minor just involves adding G sharp. So there's only one change in each case. So you've got plenty of pivot chords. If you want to go to keys that are further away, well, you'll discover that very quickly you run out of pivot chords. So you might have to go through another key on the way to get to somewhere else, or you might have to modulate by other means. But this is how the pivot chords work. So again, going from C major to A minor, any major key to its relative minor, we've got those four possibilities. So let's have a look at what I've done in example three. So just to remind you how this sounds. So hopefully you can hear that modulation very clearly. This is why I've just done these as two bar fragments. So we can really focus on the modulation so we can hear that and see it. So number three starts in the same way as before. Now the pivot chord is here at the end of the first bar. So what have I done here? I've got chord four in C major, which is chord six in A minor. So that's my pivot chord. There's a passing note at the top there. And immediately I've gone to chord five in A minor because I can hear this last chord of bar one as chord four in C. But as soon as I hear that going on to this, 
I hear it in the context of A minor. So you hear the pivot chord is really doing its job very neatly. By introducing the G sharps, that really establishes A minor and it's chord five. So I'm going five back to one. Now on this question about harmonic, melodic, minor, all the rest of it, I've purposely just thrown something else in here. In that second bar of number three, you can see the bass part goes E, F sharp, G sharp. And I've done that on purpose because I know some people will say, well, you said you were using the harmonic, melodic, the harmonic minor scale, not the melodic minor. Yes, I'm using the harmonic minor scale to work out these chords. I'm thinking harmony at that point. But when I'm writing the F sharp in the bass, I am using melodic minor for a moment because the bass line is doing something melodic. So the chords belong to the harmonic minor, but the bass line is suddenly doing something melodic. And I don't want E, F natural, G sharp, because it gives me a kind of slightly awkward augmented second between F and G sharp. So that's why we have the melodic minor, not just to use in the melody, the soprano line, but in any part that's moving melodically. So that's how you kind of think harmonic minor for the chords, and then you apply melodic minor when you're writing a melodic line. So that's just a little aside as part of this video. So there we have it, how to use the pivot chord. So the pivot chord is crystal clear. Everything left of the pivot chord is in the original key. Everything right of the pivot chord is in the new key. Be clear about where the pivot chord comes, then introduce the accidentals for the new key and you're away. So just to recap on the sound of all that, here's number one, going from C major to G major, the dominant key. Here's number two, going from C major to F major, the subdominant key. And here's number three, going from C major to the relative minor, A minor. So I hope this gives you confidence in determining how to calculate which the pivot chords might be, how to use them, what has to happen before and after a pivot chord in order to affect a really good modulation. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you have, there's much more on offer at www.mmcourses.co.uk, where you might want to read one of our blogs, for example, or you might want to have a look at our courses, lots of courses that are going much further with the kind of topic that we've explored in this video. Courses in theory, keyboard harmony, oral dictation, oral skills, sight reading, lots of different things out there. Courses for composers, writing chorales in the Bach style, all sorts of things that would relate to the kind of stuff we've been studying in this video. And also you can join our Maestros program if you wish. Lots of perks for Maestro members, including uh, reductions on the cost of our courses and the chance to meet every month with like-minded musicians for live streams in which we explore all sorts of exciting musical topics. So if that's of interest to you, have a look at the website and see what there is that would be something you'd enjoy being a part of.